comes Fauci Claus. Here comes Fauci Claus. Right down Fauci Claus Lane. Oh, ho, ho, guys. Merry Christmas from the Fauci Monster himself and Fauci Cinema to each and every single one of you. Uh, being the fact that it is Christmas, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail, this is going to be my top five Christmas horror movies of all time. And guys, let me start off by saying this is just my personal preference. No reason to get upset if your favorite movie didn't make the list. Um, I was looking at all kinds of lists that were out there. A lot of people had Gremlins on there. I personally don't. I don't really find it's supposed to be a horror movie, but I don't really consider it a horror movie. And I also am not a huge fan of Gremlins. As big of a following as it has, I'm not that big of a fan. So I am going to do my top five, and I do have four honorable mentions four so we're going to talk about nine films right here in this in this little top five i'm going to do but before we get started definitely remember to hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you are not already uh that is a perfect holiday gift for me you don't got to buy me anything just simply hit that like and subscribe get this youtube algorithm working for me because uh my horror movie content is not popping like i want it to be yet yeah, it is the christmas time of the year so i get that it's going to be slowed down but I would like to get that bump in a little bit more. So definitely do that for me, and I really appreciate it. So I think we're going to jump into this bad boy real quick with the honorable mentions. Uh, honorable mentions for me, I have Jack Frost. No, not the Michael Keaton family snowman movie. I'm talking about the killer snowman who was an, an escaped a serial killer, you know, somehow got mixed in and melted down and blended with the snow to come back as a killer snowman. You might remember the box art. That's not the snowman we get. We get a lovable, huggable snowman. And obviously this movie is not to be taken seriously whatsoever. I mean, they try to kill the snowman with blow dryers for crying out loud. Um, but it is a fun holiday horror flick. Uh, there is holiday throughout this whole movie. There's lights, decorations, and you definitely can tell it's Christmas time and it got a ton of snow. So you can't beat this one if you're going to be checking out a Christmas horror movie, my friends. Uh, another honorable mention for me is Better Watch Out. Um, yes, it screams holiday, but this movie didn't need to be during the holiday Christmas season. It could have taken place in any other time of the year, and the movie would have been the exact same. Um, Luke, the main kid, he has a great performance, so much that I hate him with a passion and want him to die in the most painful way, which he does not, unfortunately. Um... I think that's another reason why it's on the honorable mention list and not in the top five. A lot of anger and rage when I watch this movie that I don't really want to have, you know, watching a Christmas horror movie. So that's why I had to put it in the honorable mentions category. Another honorable mention for me is Black Christmas 2006. I know this movie gets a lot of hate. I know it is no comparison to the 74 Bob Clark classic. But this thing does bring a little bit something fresh, brings craziness to the Black Christmas name. Um, you get a lot of Billy and you get to see Agnes in this one, so that's pretty cool. Definitely screams Christmas time, holiday atmosphere. A lot of pretty people in this movie, so if you're really interested in the pretty girls, this is one for you. Stay away from the 2019 one. Stick with the original in the 2006 remake. Definitely way more bloodier, way more gory. It's a fun, hip slasher if you want to check out a Christmas horror movie. In my last one, only reason it didn't make top five, and it probably should have, it should have been at the tippy top. I'm going, It's Me, Billy, the Black Christmas fan film from Dave McRae and Bruce Dale. It don't get much better than this. If you want to follow up to the original Black Christmas, this is the one you're going to go to. It is amazing. The acting was great. The cinematography was great. The atmosphere screamed Christmas. You would believe that these characters were exactly from the original movie. You can't beat it. You really can't. Hope they get to make a sequel to that one. I'm looking forward to it. I had Dave on the channel. Uh, me and James had a watch along the It's Me Billy. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a card up above. Bam! Check it out. It's, it was a great time hanging out with Dave. Always is. Much appreciated, Dave. You're the man. All right, guys. So let's get into my top five Christmas horror movies. Here we go. Coming in at number five for me, is this is a newly discovered film that I just watched actually this Christmas season. And it is called The Christmas Horror Story. Um, it's kind of an anthology of different horror, you know, stories going on. I, I'm a, in the same town. It's supposed to be the same town. Um, you know, all dark and, and different kinds of stories. Uh, 
the one story the, the mom and dad are going out into the woods to get a Christmas tree and they go on somebody else's land to get it and what they don't know is that it's a land filled with changelings and their son gets lost but he comes back a changeling that story aspect of it is very creepy because the kid's not acting normal he's 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 very aggressive and, and very out of place and they come they come to find out later that that's not really their son at all, and they got to go back to the woods to exchange this changeling, and there's a ton of them in the woods. That scene's amazing. You see their eyes in the woods. I like that storyline. There's the storyline of, you know, Krampus, Krampus coming back and, and killing the naughty family. They're doing all the family does all the wrong things, and they're doing everything for the wrong reason, and they're not telling the truth, and. Krampus comes, and any story with Krampus that looks good, and this Krampus looked amazing, flies for me. And then the other story was uh, took place at a school. I guess there were some killings at this school, and they didn't know who was doing it. And I guess there was a ghost uh, of, of somebody who died there. And very creepy, very dark, you know. And, you know, on this day, a child was born, and the ghost comes back to impregnate this teen, and I guess carry on the evil. I... If you have not checked it out, please check it out. William Shatner's like the host of the whole thing. He's like the radio DJ. Go check it out. It's a great film. I had a great time with it. That comes in at number five. Uh, number four for me is going to be Silent Night, Deadly Night. I know, maybe kind of low. But how could you not put a Christmas horror movie on here that the killer is an actual killer Santa? It doesn't get much better than that. We get... The amazing kill of the antler kill. That even if you haven't seen the movie, you've probably seen the kill. Um, it's worth checking it out just for that. This is a bloody good time of a horror movie for a Christmas. And you can't beat a guy dressed up as Santa doing the killing. Yes, it's cheesy. But this cheese in this movie works. I like the sequel as well, even though it is half of a retelling of the original. But Garbage Day! I was going to put that one on the list, but I couldn't put them both. So maybe I'll do a combo platter. Silent Night, Deadly Night 1. Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. Stay away from Part 3, 4, 5. I had a good time with 5. It was it was balls crazy, but I had a really good time with it. So definitely go check out 5. And the remake. Shit, I didn't put that in my list either. The remake from 2012, I believe. Silent Night with Malcolm McDowell. Uh, and I think Jamie King, I think is her name, from My Bloody Valentine. <laughs> Go check that one out. That was an honorable mention as well. That is a great remake. I had a really great time with that one. And the Santa uses a damn flamethrower. So go check it out too. But Silent Night, Deadly Night had to come in at number four. Um, so much Christmas atmosphere. So many Christmas vibes. It really works. And I can take love the cheesy good time that I get when I watch this movie. So number four, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Coming in at number three for me, I got to go with Krampus. Yes, it doesn't bring, you know, the blood, the guts, and the gore that you're hoping for with a movie like this. That they could have taken this movie into a darker direction. But that's okay. Adam Scott was great in this movie. I think he's hilarious, even when he's not trying to be hilarious. Uh, the young boy in the film, I think his name is Max. Could be wrong. I haven't watched this since last year. I know, I know. It's a top five, but you haven't watched it, Fauci. I get it. I ran out of time, guys. Ran out of time. I'm busy delivering people's dreams for Christmas. I'm that FedEx guy making your Christmas happen. God bless. But no, seriously, Krampus, it's dark. It could have been darker, but it's pretty dark. I mean, this, this kid doesn't believe in Santa Claus anymore. He rips up that Christmas note, throws it out the window, floats right up, and Krampus is ready to snatch that whole family up and... Throughout the film, the people are disappearing. You don't know if they're getting killed or what's going on. At the time, you think they're getting killed, but at the, when the end of the movie comes around, you realize that all Krampus was doing, similar to the poster, the movie poster, that Darren Sands pointed out that I honestly never noticed, he's holding that snow globe, and that is where the family is going to be. So Krampus doesn't actually kill anybody. He's more of a kidnapper. He, ki he takes the whole family and puts them in snow globes and then puts them right on a shelf. So, if you're naughty, if you're good, if you're good, you get Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas. If you're bad, you get Krampus. And he punishes the naughty children. But Krampus looked great. The elves and the minions looked great. That jack-in-the-box scene? Bonkers, dude. The gingerbread man? Hilarious. 
but creepy at the same time. This is just a fun flick. It's PG-13, so you can even watch it with your kids if you want to. I highly recommend Krampus. It's a Screams Holiday. Screams Horror. Number three on the list, three on the list, guys. Coming in at number two, this might be a shocker. I'm going with Rachel Nichols in P2. I know what you guys are thinking. This isn't fudge, but that's not even, I don't, that didn't even come to my mind. It's a Christmas horror movie. It takes place on Christmas Eve, if I'm not mistaken. And you're also probably thinking, wow, there's not that much blood, guts, and gore in this film. No, there's not, because it only fo it mainly focuses on the two, the two people. Thomas, the security guard, and Rachel Nichols' character, whose name escapes me right now. But you've got to... This movie relies on great performances, or it's not going to work. And let me tell you what. They deliver. 100%. They deliver. Thomas is a creepy son of a bitch who's obviously obsessed with this girl and he wants to be with her and he doesn't want to be alone on Christmas. And honestly, can you blame him for not wanting to be alone on Christmas? Nobody wants to be alone. So I kind of get where he's coming from, but he goes the wrong way about doing it. Obviously, he's been keeping keeping an eye on her for a very long time because he knows, you know, he sees everything. He's a security guard. He got all the footage. He can look at anything. Uh, the one guy in the film was obviously sexually harassing her or, you know, he was a little too drunk. So Thomas makes him pay in the most brutal way. I loved it. He ties that dude to a chair, gets in the car, and starts ramming him up against the brick wall. And every time he hits him, you know, like his blood comes out everywhere spraying. He hits him again. More blood comes out. His guts are laying on the ground. It's an amazing kill scene, and I, I really dig it. I had to look it up, guys. Rachel Nichols' character's name is Angela. But Angela sucks you in with her performance. She is scared for her life, but she is not willing to let Thomas destroy her life and destroy everything that she loves in this world. So she fights the entire time. She battles back. She tries to escape. She kills the, his dog with the crowbar in the backseat. She is not putting up with this shit anymore. She kills his dog. He, she sticks, I believe it was like a pen or something, in Thomas's eye. It looks amazing. The blood squirts out. His eye starts to swell up. She's fighting and fighting and fighting. She's not willing to go out. He tases her and he keeps pursuing her, but she keeps battling. And then eventually, in the end of the movie, she rises up. She ties his ass to the steering wheel of that exact car, pours gasoline to it. And she was just walking away. And then he called her the one word, the C word, that no woman wants to be called. And she blows his ass up. There is a lot of Christmas mood and atmosphere in this film. Obviously, it's an isolation film, just him and her in, the, in this parking garage, which is on level P2. Um, he's singing Elvis's I'll have a blue. I love that scene. And now, every time I hear that song, I think this movie. If you have not seen P2, you're doing yourself a disservice. Go check it out. Go have a good time. I love it. I can't believe that I don't watch it more throughout the year. It is a great film. I am invested in these characters throughout, and I think you guys will be too. So that's my number two. And coming Pizza. in, none other than, in first place, the almighty Bob Clark classic from 1974, which I've only seen twice, by the way. Just watched it for the first time last year, and thanks to Dave McRae, have grown a bigger appreciation to it. Black Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. I know what you're thinking. This isn't your kind of film either. I know, it's a slow burn. Not my kind of film. But Billy is a very interesting killer. We never get to actually like see who he is. You only ever see part of his face in his hands. And you hear his voice with the creepy phone calls. Pretty pink cunt, pretty pink cunt, lick it, lick it, lick it. I love the phone calls. Olivia Hussey, fantastic. Margot Kidder, beautiful as always. You cannot beat it. Uh, the Christmas atmosphere is all over this film. It is in your face from the very beginning. The sorority house has decorations. There's a Christmas party. It works. They throw the great black... Yeah, black. Eh. Got black Christmas on the brain. They throw the great red herring in there as Peter. He's a creepy son of a bitch. Like, I really honestly thought it was him the first time I seen this movie. He is a creepy looking dude. And then that basement scene. It's pretty intense. Pretty intense. And obviously my favorite iconic kill with the glass unicorn statue. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I I can't get enough of Black Christmas. I never would have thought I would have enjoyed it, but
but I can also not believe I waited this long to check out this film. Billy is an underrated killer. Um, he deserved the sequel further back when. Thank you, Dave McRae and Bruce Dell, for giving us It's Me, Billy, which had to fill the void, and it did a damn great job of doing that. So thanks to you guys. But this Black Christmas is definitely, has to be, the number one Christmas horror movie of all time for me. Um, as other Christmas horror movies come out and get created, I might change this list down the road. But these are definitely my top five at the current time frame. Black Christmas reigning supreme at numero uno. So let me know your ranking down below in the comments. I can't wait to get this discussion started with you guys. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be seeing a lot of Black Christmas coming in at number one, or at least showing up on these top five lists. So please, after you check out this video, leave the comments down below. Love to hear from you guys. Like I said before, hit the like button, hit that subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel, and let's help this channel grow even further. I can't wait. And if you have not already, if you can't see, where's it at? I see one of the strangers sitting up there on the shelf. Go on the channel and check out the Slay at Night teaser trailer that me and James are doing our upcoming fan film coming in 2023 so love to hear your feedback on that as well so you guys have a very merry christmas and a happy new year and i'll see you guys in the next one have a scary day